Listen, you're not gonna find anything on me, okay? Trust me. Empty your pockets into the tray, sir, or we'll have to. <sighs> your pockets, sir? Lady, the problem isn't in my pants. No! Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's been a pretty big week at X-Men. We had Inferno number one come out from Jonathan Hickman. Obviously, we did a special review with Doc and Skip and Dosh returning for an X-Men review here, right here on the channel. We're going to try and keep those up uh, if we can moving forward. But there were a couple of other comics in X-Men this week. Sword number eight, Wolverine 16. And here to talk with me about that is always the, the X-Men historian, the Marvel aficionado. How you doing, Doc? Wonderful, sir. It is a happy, wonderful Sunday morning. And uh, let's go. Unfortunately, Sword 8 and Wolverine 16 do not quite live up to the Inferno uh, number one hype, or at least the, the quality of that comic book. I thought that was very good. These two have uh, their strengths, and they certainly have some weaknesses along the way. We'll hit Sword number 8 first, because there's something that's so so terrible with this that we need to hit it first. Now, there's a new artist on here. I don't know who. Uh, I think it's Guy or Guy Villanova. Guy, I'm not Yeah. I think that's I, how you pronounce it. I can't pronounce this, it, so I'm not even going to try. This is one of the worst illustrated comics uh, we've seen. Now, I don't think it's as bad as Gary Brown's work on um, X-Force, but his specifically his illustrations of Storm's face, one of the most beautiful comic characters in the history of the industry, uh, makes her, what did I say? I said she looked like Granny Goodness, but black. Yeah. It's, I... She looks hideous. This, the art in this is, you know what? It really reminds me of, um, you know, Igor Cordy, who I was never a big fan of. Oddly enough, I'm sitting here looking at a stack of Soldier X comics that he did um, from about 20 years ago. And you know what? It, it's the, the, his face is, but this, this Villanova guy, his, his face is, are she is absolutely hideous I, it was it was really disturbing and because they were so jarring too um because it's not it, very the, consistent from panel to panel no no like i mean it almost looked like a different character it was if you uniquely have, awful multiple times it was um like if you took off the earrings and you know like if it was just the face without any coloring um, you wouldn't be able to tell that it's the same person from panel to panel because there's no consistency to to the art. And depending on the angle, it, it, it was really, really ugly at times. Absolutely. It's completely jarring. And the worst thing about this is Al Ewing's sword number eight script is essentially all about, you know, uh, Storm, Storm. and trying to explain why she is the regent of Araco, despite not being an Iraqi mutant, why the they're allowing her to be a leader. You know that all the Iraqi uh, mutants, you know, have been f fighting for thousands of years and they're, they're all battle hardened warriors. Why would they allow storm to be the leader? And that's what he's trying to explain here. And it, I, the story itself isn't awful. It's not great. Uh, it's perfectly serviceable, but it, you know, it kind of just falls under the weight of this terrible, terrible art where you're depicting the main character is just grotesque. And there is a body horror element to this, but she was grotesque before you even got to that part. Yeah. Uh, honestly, um, when it got to the body horror portion of this, it was actually more consistent in the art style. Um, and maybe he's, maybe this, this artist is more adept with body horror. And that's the reason why they, they the opening the monster, the lava guy, he was it the best looking character in the whole book. Yeah, exactly. So maybe maybe, maybe he this does is better an artist. monsters. Exactly. Maybe this is an artist that that is very adept at monsters. They figured it'd be appropriate, but then they got to the the you know normal kind of human looking mutants, and it, there was no consistency, and a lot of the just look plain ugly. Um, maybe that's it. And in which case, hey, it's a misstep. Um, but it was unfortunately, you know, it was just bad. talk about sword. It's been so uneven. It keeps getting interrupted here. This comic 
is necessary because it doesn't make sense why, why Storm would be the regent and why they would allow her to be the head of the table, even though yeah. she's not an Iraqi mutant. Um, I guess the big nemesis in this one is Tarion. Is it the Uncaring? I believe Correct. it is. Correct. Yeah, the one essentially from like this god-level mutant from Morocco that's done all these uh, experiments, and that's where the Chimera are coming up in, in Hellions. They've been fighting well, the Hellions and stuff. And this character has been per portrayed as so powerful that a character of Storm's power levels, even if she is an Omega-level mutant, would never stand a chance with this character. And I'll be honest, uh, Al Ewing does his best to, to explain why she she's victorious, but it's almost ridiculous that that it goes down like this, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, now, like they never really, you know, Tarn has been in the the Hellions book a few times. He's been kind of one of the major um, recurring characters ever since um, the dinner party of swords, um, and so the um you know he, he his power though is to rewrite dna on the fly like that's his power so he you know going up against him is an incredibly difficult task he he's able to basically create his own army of um like willing devotees um that he you've seen him have in in the hellions book and it makes him a very 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 like god tier mutant he'd yes. be on like, he'd be on that like power. scarlet witch scarlet witch you know just entirely rewriting reality around him and but this felt like they were trying to go with that um uh in the 80s where it was storm versus calypso or callisto in the um you know for leader of the morlocks and it had a very similar finish where you know an, a depowered storm but this time depowered and just body mutilated figured, yes yeah um, tumors all over the one half of their body yeah and like tentacles and shit for arms and all kinds of crazy stuff um and but she manages to just stab him almost in the heart like if she even touches it again it'll pierce through his heart um, but he says right there i could make you you would die instantly if i wanted you to yeah why would he care if it touches she's never going to touch it if he doesn't want it to like yeah i mean i guess maybe her hand was still on it and no it she, shows the blade clearly and she's not i know it. I know it, it. This is another like one of those. Oh, you get me right to the end, and then I just give up. Like if her finger was on top of it, that would make sense because if you kill me, I'm going to fall. Yeah, and but I can tap it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then he gives her her powers back. Why? Yeah, he just he get. Not only does he give her powers back, he entirely undoes all the DNA rewriting and stuff that he had done. And they make this real big deal. I don't know why. I mean, maybe maybe there's a point down the line on why her DNA is exactly correct again. Uh, nothing out of place. And this, and I'm like, okay, well, she's basically the same, so who cares? It like, does it, establish it, that she's the leader. I don't believe that she would win that fight, and it, it seemed a little bit ridiculous. Uh, it's not the worst thing. Uh, so story wise ever but the art's so terrible it's really hard to recommend this comic to me it it is um plus the fact that look it's another one shot it seems like um sword just does one shots in between being the designated sacrificial crossover title for any event going on so this is just the the one shot issue in between i guess it explains some stuff but stories mediocre all you know all you really need to know if you want to skip this book is storm wins arena fights and they respect her because of that the end that's it now let's get into what i would consider a better comic book wolverine 16 certainly has much better art by adam kubert not his best effort but still pretty darn good ben percy on here this one really isn't really great either because uh you know ben percy is supposed to be the wolverine guy 
Uh, Wolverine is one of the most distrustful characters in the history of comic books. Yeah. And yet, yet uh, you know, he's sitting there, he's mad about Solemn. Solemn shows up, buys a thing, and he's he's telling him that that uh several more black whatever its name whatever, is, pirate, yeah. is is the one that's enacted all this. He actually stole the logic diamonds from Severmore and he's put them back on um back on Krakoa, and he and, and Wolverine need to go and, and kill it. And he's yeah. gonna side with him. And Wolverine's I, like, sure, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, this guy that every other interaction I've had with him was him basically screwing me. Um, yeah, sure. I'm totally going to believe it and team up with him. D- d- is, is, you know, is this this Wolverine just a complete fucking rube or something like he's I, 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 I don't well, understand. Even mention the monologue where he's. He's saying, you know, like how much he loves Krakoa, even though he's been like one of the only mutants that's been really uh, you know, suspicious Skeptical. of everything that's going on. Yeah. Yeah, like, exactly. Can we get like some, this, some something like uh, you know, stable about the character? Uh, yeah, this uh, like unless this is really serious, like unless Ben Percy's got something that he really going to tie all this together. It just looks like a really inconsistently written Wolverine. Um, now, as you said, this, this issue, the art was significantly better, but at the same time, I'm looking at like expressions on Wolverine's face when he should have been sitting just there looking, looking down the whole time. Yeah. When yes. he was sitting there with, with, you know, solemn at the bar and he should have been just all the, the look on his face should have been pure skepticism. Like, yeah. Okay. Buddy, the entire goddamn time. And then he should have been like, yeah, and you know what? We're going to bring some backup, too, because I don't trust your ass either. But yeah. no, no, Wolverine just, you know, now they granted, go to the boat. He, yeah. Doc, what happens immediately? As soon as he goes, he cuts, you know, a uh, uh, solemn uh, yeah. loose because that was the ruse is I've taken him in. I've got him like we were supposed to. He cuts it free. He's like, now. And what solemn do? Jumps just off jumps the boat. Away. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to leave you to this fight. Like really, you know what? A- any normal Logan like Wolverine would have been like, yeah, you know what? Hey kid, I know I told you I was going to, you know, this was going to be a trick. You know what? I think I'm going to leave you tied up. Cause I don't fucking trust you. And now yeah, I'm going to take care of this. Yeah. So now I'm going to take care of this guy. I'm going to take care but of this guy. Is- and when I have them both tied up, then I'm going to figure out what the hell the real deal is. The thing is, he can't stab Severmore because no. you know what he bleeds. So he ends Acid. up, you know, twirling a, a chain around him and throwing him into the water with an anchor and killing him that way, and delivering this big ass ugly boat to Emma Frost. And yep. then there's just like a bunch of random scenes that get us up to the end where he figures out that Solemn has actually been on Krakoa the whole time, at least whatever little offshoot that was part of Rocco that didn't go to Mars. Yeah, I think okay. it was the one that that um, what, what the 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 magicy guy, the one that came yeah. over. Yeah, um, yeah, that he's been hanging out there, and apparently he's been banging Krakoa because he just bangs everything. Yeah, and he's got three of what's his nuts his eggs. Yeah, he's got a a couple of the. He's the got a cerebral from, helmet. Yep. And I guess he had the island grow him a Cerebro helmet or steal him one um, and bring it to him. So he's basically trying to set himself up as having his own, I guess, hatchery thing over his his little section. Percy's trying to set, set the solemn character up, not only as the main nemesis of Wolverine, which isn't going to work. But as like the new Loki of mutants or whatever. Yeah. And I guess he thinks he's done a good job making him interesting, but he hasn't. No. I could give two shits at this point. Like when they had that first sit down and they were having that conversation and he's got the wine or whatever, that's supposed to be tense. And it would have been if we'd seen these two battling each other cat and mouse for the last six months instead of him just showing up like in the background every once in a while. So you, when you got this big moment when they finally meet up, who gives a shit? And then when he comes in here, you're just going, "This is this is stupid. Where uh, this is ridiculous." 
you you didn't work for any of this. You're just popping it out as a surprise. Yeah, there's no. This is not the payoff they think it is. Yeah, because nobody cares at this point. Nobody has been made to care. You haven't done your job to get us to care. And as a result, guess what? We don't care. Um, and as and the thing is, you're right. There's it's supposed to be this tense kind of almost like a parlay. Of yeah, like the scene this- in uh, what is it where you have Al Pacino, and Robert De Niro. Yeah, in heat. In heat, yes. That's what it's supposed to feel like. Yeah, exactly. Except for I have no, you know, interest in the Pacino character here at all. Like There's no uh, rival rivalry yet. No, they haven't established this. Like, I hate to break this to you, Marvel, but you can't just will characters into a role. You've been trying it for 10 years now. It doesn't work. And you're, you're trying to will Solemn into this new nemesis role. Sorry, you got to give me something that's going to beat fifth, like 40 years of Sabretooth as the nemesis. Um, so we get we get two big reveals here at the end. The first is uh, walking Deus Ex Machina or Deus Ex Machina. My bad. Uh, yeah. Emma Frost shows up to deal with with Saul, I guess, to interrogate him. And then we see the bride of whatever that thing that they killed in hell when they went to get the Maramasa blades, which is one of the best, the, the high points of uh, Ted of Swords, apparently is alive and has her sights on Wolverine and Solemn. Apparently, because, I mean... Yeah, she, haven't he heard did. about this in a year. Yeah, exactly. This is... <laughs> again... Maybe it hasn't been a year, but you know what I'm saying. Well... Actually, it has been almost a year since. Um, but regardless, this it hasn't been since the the lead up to you know Sword Party X. Um, we haven't had any. It's any, not a subplot you, if you haven't talked about it. In 12 exactly. Issues. If you don't <laughs> even bring it up for like twelve, it will actually be about ten issues. Because so I think that was X or Wolverine number like six. Um, and we're at issue 16 now. You haven't even mentioned it. They haven't even been, there hasn't been any mention of the hand or the beast or Hellbride or anything in since they left that purgatory hell place, like that pit. There mm-hmm. hasn't been any mention of it. You know, not even like a one panel or like one page where, hey, this is still going on. Hey, this is still going on. For the love of God, learn how to write fucking subplots, Marvel writers. Ben, you're it supposed cool, to be though. The, Well, I mean, Ben's supposed to be the, the guy that's going to be kind of setting the course now that Hickman's gone with his, you know, de- life and death of Wolverine thing. Uh, get better. You're not this good or you're failing miserably at it if you think you are. The, the design on the Hell Bride Lady is looks pretty good. I'll actually recommend this one. The art's solid. Uh, while the story isn't spectacular, it's certainly moving something along. Yeah. And, you know, it's 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 ably constructed. It's just not a wonderful. So I would give it a a, a, a mild recommend. If you if you like Wolverine, this is perfectly fine. It's, uh, it's, it, it's keep, keep it moving. In my opinion, it's kind of a mid-tier Wolverine story. Solid. I mean, you'll you'll enjoy yourself. Um, even if you wanna, even if you don't really give a shit about any of the villains, it was kind of very typical 1990s uh, throwaway villain Wolverine story. Except for they expect us to not treat them like throwaway villains. Well, the, the bad thing about this is we're not going to see any of this stuff for another five months at least. Yep, because we got. Cause- I mean, well, there's always a possibility that they address it in Life and Deaths of Wolverine, so I have no idea. Cause okay, I mean, got, that would be weird. But it okay. would be. It would this is be strictly a, a Wolverine subplot. This is supposed to move the entire X Men franchise forward. I know, so, but hey, who there's knows? a good chance. How about that, Doc? There's a good chance we don't hear about any of this for another five months. I would say you're probably and right we'll on get. That like 13 Wolverine comics in the meantime. Yeah. 
and not a single mention of it. And they will once again, forget what a subplot looks like. The good news is we had Inferno, not the greatest thing Hickman's ever done, but it's pretty damn good. The art was fun. And that one's certainly moving some things along, addressing things that we were excited about. Uh, you know, uh, I, I feel bad for Sword. Sword should be something cool. Uh, every once in a while, you could see what it could be, but it rarely ever lives up to that, or it certainly doesn't consistently. You know, and, and Wolverine, as far as the X-Men titles, has been one of the better, more consistent ones. And, you know, this this doesn't do anything to, to negate that. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, I just wish... Almost this this does remind me that if Inferno would have just picked one artist for all of those issues, Valerio Shidi wouldn't have had to not draw this issue of Sword. That's a good point. Thanks a lot, Jordan White. Ugh. 